Greetings everybody! In today's video we're going to go over how to model this loader slot spherical bearing in SOLIDWORKS. The bearing consists of a spherical ball and body with a threaded boss. The bearing is lubricated with a dry film that's coated on the surface of the spherical ball. These bearings are typically used for control arms that are found in automotive suspensions as well as aerospace control surface and landing gear systems. In this video, you will learn how to model the components of the bearing, create the bearing assembly, and create realistic component appearances in SOLIDWORKS. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button to help us out so we can keep making great tutorials like this. We're going to use part number AMBM8 uh, from this catalog page from New Hampshire Ball Bearings to get our base dimensions. Many of the dimensions, such as the body's loading slot geometry and spherical inner diameter, are proprietary information to NHBB, so we're going to make some assumptions for the purposes of making this video. I've linked the catalog page and NHBB's website in the description below. They have a lot of great resources if you want to learn more about the products they offer, or just bearings in general. Okay, let's get started with making the bearing body. Our first step is to do a simple revolve that we'll shave away from to create our finished product using subtractive design intent. We'll start by making a sphere for the body spherical OD and create a rectangle to simulate the threaded boss. And we'll set the diameter to 0.5 and the length to 2.54 and we're just going to add in a little undercut here and create a tangent line to merge the two bodies together set the angles between them to 35 degrees Prepare the catalog page. Right. Now we're going to use our power trim tool to just cut away at half of our sketch and remove all the features we don't need. set the undercut dimensions so that the sketch is fully defined. And we'll just merge the undercut with the tangent line there. Alright. Now we'll create our revolve. This is what I like to call our lollipop. It's basically our starting blank that we're going to use and just shave away. Our first step is going to be to create the flat faces on the ends of the bearing head. So we're going to set the width for the, uh, the body there. We're not sure how far down it goes, so we're just going to drag and drop. Alright, and we'll do a mid-plane cut, and we're going to mirror it over to the other side using our, right, uh, using our front plane. Alright. Now we have to create our spherical ID. We're just going to sketch out a circle, cut it in half, and then do a revolve cut. Now we don't know what the spherical ID is, so we are assuming it's the diameter of the ball. And we'll trim off half of it and do our revolve cut. Now 
Now we have to do our loading slot. This is how the ball is inserted into the body. Again, we don't know what these dimensions are, because they are proprietary to New Hampshire ball bearing. But we are going to assume that they are equal to the width and diameter of the ball. We know in reality that they would be slightly oversized to allow free clearance for the ball's insertion. create a box and a circle and just trim away at it to create our shape. And we're going to do a extrude we're going to do an extrude cut in two directions from the midplane because the cut goes slightly below the midplane as you saw on our catalog page. All right. Now we're going to do our through bore. This is basically to break away the sharp edges of the spherical ID. That would create pressure points when the bearing was installed and in use. And we'll create some fillets for the loading slot ends. And create some fillets for the face and the undercut. And we want to put in a chamfer at the bottom. We're going to put threads on, so it's always easier to put the chamfer on first. Alright. To make our threads, we're going to be using the thread tool, which I actually didn't even know existed until I started putting this video together. That's the amazing thing about SOLIDWORKS, it's almost impossible to know all of the tools at your disposal. Okay, we'll set the material to AISI 304 stainless, and we'll give it a matte finish, so it's not too reflective. Alright, now it's time to make our ball. We're going to start by making a circular sketch and just creating a sphere from that at the ball diameter using the revolve tool. And then once that's done, we will shave away the faces. Now we're going to create the two flat faces with the similar methodology that we used for creating the flats on the body. Just doing an extrude cut to get the width. We'll enter in the width there. And do a mid-plane extrude cut. and we'll mirror it over to the other side. All right, now we just have to do our bore diameter, which is the through hole in the ball. You know that's 0.5 inches. Just do an extrude cut. And we'll add a little chamfer to break the edges of the bore diameter. We'll set the material again to AISI 304. Now it's currently all polished steel, which in reality it won't be. So let's set the ID and the end faces to machined. And we're going to set the spherical outer diameter to sandblasted iron because it would be covered with a dry film and sandblasted iron actually looks really close to what it would look like in reality. I'm going to change the ID to a machine steel or to a polished steel because it would have a more honed finish to get that tight clearance. All right, now it's time to create our assembly. It's going to be pretty quick and easy. We're going to do a concentric mate 
between the ball and the spherical ID of the body, and we're just going to make the faces parallel. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notifications about future videos, and also be sure to check out the other great content on the Crowcheck Industries YouTube channel.